Hello everyone. My name is Poonam Kaul. I'm the product manager of Lead Hunter Screening and Profiling Services. And what I want to do today is provide you some insights about allosteric modulators and how Discoverex can help you screen and identify PAMs and NAMs in your program. So as you may be aware, endogenous ligands, they bind to the active site of GPCRs and they initiate intracellular signaling cascades that mediate cellular responses. So orthosteric ligands, they bind to this active site. On the other hand, what allosteric ligands do is that they bind to a topographically different site other than the orthosteric ligand binding pocket and stabilize and induce changes in the receptor causing a shift in their responsiveness to endogenous ligand. So when you have a PAM in your program, that what will happen is that you will see an amplification of the orthosteric agonist effect. If you have a NAM, you will see attenuation of the effects of the orthosteric ligand, as also shown in this graph here. So if you were to run a dose response curve in presence of increasing amounts of the modulator, uh, if it's a PAM, what you will see is a leftward shift in the, in the dose response curve and the lowered EC50 or enhanced potency. On the bottom graph, you see a NAM. So you run the uh, dose response curve of the endogenous ligand in presence of increasing amounts of NAM. And what you see is a rightward shift in the, in the signal or higher EC50. So there are many drug programs that have allosteric now, and because there are many advantages to having PAM and NAMs, and some of them are listed in this slide for you. So for example, because the endogenous ligand is present, you preserve the natural signaling uh, in the assay. Now, allosteric is really good if you have subtype-specific receptors. So an example is metabotropic glutamate receptor, uh, where the orthosteric site is extremely conserved. So it's very difficult to identify orthosteric drugs in this particular subtype-specific receptor. But you could identify allosteric uh, drugs uh, for these subtype-specific receptors. Now, in case of um, a program where it's been difficult to identify an orthosteric drug, you now have another possibility for new chemistries for an allosteric site. So that's another advantage. Uh, one other advantage is that uh, in case of peptide and protein receptors, small molecule scaffolds are very difficult uh, for, these, for these receptors. So if you have an allosteric site or an allosteric program, you can have new ways to address uh, these receptors. And finally, uh, one big problem that you can also overcome is reducing drug overdose if you have a PAM and NAM uh, in your programs. Now what we do when we do our standard PAM and NAM curves, the way we run them is that cells are pre-incubated with increasing amounts of your sample followed by induction with ECE20 of the agonist when we are running your PAM. When we're running your NAM, what we do is we incubate your cells with increasing amounts of sample followed by induction with EC80 of the agonist. And these cases, what you will see if you do a, an experiment like that with Discoverex, you'll see an enhancement in the signal or you'll see an attenuation in the signal. Now, another option that we provide, which we notice clients use a lot and is very ideal for looking at PAMs and NAMs, is the EC50 shift experiment. And this is a relatively simple experiment but can provide you very uh, good insights uh, into your PAMs and NAMs. So here what we do is we run your agonist dose response curve in presence of increasing amounts of the allosteric modulators. As you can see, I've provided some data here that shows you good case studies uh, for a typical PAM or a NAM and how this EC50 data will look like. So on the left side, you have CHRM1, and we've run this in presence of increasing amounts of a CHRM1 
uh, uh, drug, which is called BQCA, and you can see an, a lesser shift in the uh, EC50 of the acetylcholine, uh, which is the ligand for this receptor. And in the, on the right side, we have a NAM, which is methoctramine, which is a NAM for CHRM4, and we've run a dose-response curve in presence of increasing amounts of methotromine, and you can see a rightward shift in the, uh, in the EC50. So this is a very nice way uh, to identify if you have a PAM and NAM in your program. If you need more information about all the services that we offer, we have a nice website, uh, which is the link for which is provided below. You can go here, you can look at all the 800 or so cell lines that we offer, and you can choose PAM and NAM uh, for, for your study. Uh, in addition, we also have various formats. You can use various formats to run your assay as well. Thank you very much.